All right, welcome back to Armchair Coaches. So you're back here with Jack and Justin. And while we are the ones that typically cover football, today we're going to be talking about some shooty hoops. Uh, right now, the, uh, the, the NBA playoffs have just been absolutely nuts. And I, I got to just start off by saying how absolutely awesome it is to have fans back in the stands. Having fans back in the stands, honestly, I didn't realize how much... I miss that in basketball and how much more exciting that makes the game. Uh, you know, great home crowds, the, the jazz, like what a home crowd they have, the fe- uh, or the suns, you know, these, these are crazy games and on, and we got to give, uh, an honorable mention to the nuggets because, uh, Nikola Jokic's brothers, you know, yeah, they're professional hitmen. Yeah. You know, they, they look like they're part of the, the banditi in Moscow or something. Yeah. Bro, I couldn't believe they weren't wearing sweatsuits. Yeah, I think that they I think they were oh, okay. honestly. Yeah. I was wrong. My bad. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were wearing sweatsuits. And how about the the guy in the stands that got in the fight with Nuggets fans and uh, shouted "Suns and four. Suns and four, baby. Suns and four. And uh, he ended up getting beat the shit out of those guys, and then looks turns around the camera and goes, "Suns and four. Suns and four. <laughs> You couldn't be a better fan than that guy. Dude, shout out to the... In in the away stadium. In the away stadium. Yeah, in the away stadium. He didn't give a fuck. He was like, I'll fight everyone in here. Sons and four. Balls. That took some balls right there. I mean, dude, we got fights in the stands. Bro, we got family members trying to fight people on the court. Fucking basketball is back, baby. Basketball is back. Dude, you know what? We beat COVID. Yes! Woo! We beat COVID! Good job, everyone. We made it to the other side. Okay, let's get into some actual basketball stuff. Okay, yeah, and I actually want to talk about this because I'm really passionate about this because that game was absurd. So, going into the second half, do you know how much they were up by? The Sixers? We're talking about the Sixers. Sixers-Hawks Hawks game. So, that's what we're going to start off with? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I think the most was 24, I think. Yeah, so going into halftime. Late they, in the third quarter. Late in the third so quarter. So, they were even going, they were up 22 just going into half, And then late into the third quarter, they were up by up to 24 Actually, I think they were up by 26 at one point and then lost the game. So I kind of want to get into that as to why. Like That was one of the most just horrible things to watch on TV. And this is also that this isn't the first game that they've blown a lead in the series. Game four, they blew a lead. It wasn't as egregious, but good God, 24 points. I feel like I'm watching Groundhog Day well, in with, 20, with Doc like, Rivers. They, yeah, last year they blew a bunch of leads with Doc Rivers. Oh, wait, that was Doc Rivers coaching the Clippers. Oh, okay. What's the common denominator there, here? There isn't. There, there can't be. He's he's an gr- amazing coach. So let me kind of get into it. The Sixers don't have a clutch player. They don't. Like, they have Joel, and he's a superstar. Don't get me wrong. But Joel isn't taking a step back three to win a game. No. Who is? Seth Curry? Like, I think he's a great shooter, and he's a great player, but he's not. That's he's, what's happening right now. Dude, Ben Simmons is, is he had eight points. He's an all-star. He's an all-star. Well, I mean, well dude, you, you have a guard. Points. You have a guard that can't score. He can't score. Well, and also he set a record. He's the only guard in NBA history to ever miss ten free throws in a playoff game. What? They're free, bro. What? They're free, dude. What? Here's my thing, dude. Trey Young goes off right for like I think he had thirty eight points. Why was Ben Simmons, this amazing defensive player, not shadowing him all night? I, I've been thinking that for a while dude, too. What? Doesn't what? make any like, sense. Like, bro, I saw Seth Curry on Trey Young, the, one of the best offensive players in the league right now, consistently. Trey's gone off every game this series. Like, who have you seen like Trey? Name one guy. I know one. He's been the best player in this series. Yeah. He's been Name, the best player. Yeah. And so, like, dude, it kind of gets into it. Like, it's like, first of all, like, Ben Simmons is supposed to be, like, this key cog, and he's freaking not. Like, he's a good player. I don't think he's a great player. I think he's really great on defense. I think he's a pretty good passer, and that's about it. He can dunk sometimes. Congrats. Most players can. And to be completely honest, and you said it earlier when we were talking, unless the guy has a clear lane, he can't score. No. He, he needs just a free he lane runs to... straight to the basket. Mm-hmm. And he can't shoot for shit. Dude, and and dude. This what is if... your guard. Like, what are you doing? Like he he can't he can't do it. Like I, I feel like everyone just is having wishful thinking about the Sixers. They have such a talented team every year. They're like, they can figure it out. They can figure it out. But th- this happens every single time. Yeah. And honestly, I, do, I don't want to give so much credit to like the six are just sucking because honestly, the, the Hawks have been very good. And Nate McMillan is a good coach and finally has the pieces. I think he needs to succeed with the Hawks. I agree with that. He was the interim coach. And I think he's going to he's going to win the job. They, what hurt them is DeAndre Hunter's out for the whole playoff series. But Trey Young had his weight. Bro, put them 
spun them like a top, bro. Like putting people on freaking rollerblades. At one point, the Sixers had a 98.3% probability of winning. Jeez. 98.3. That was in the third quarter. Probably late. In, in the, the third quarter. Probably late in the third quarter. Bro. It, how like I just gotta wonder like Doc Rivers this has happened several times the, last year wasn't the first time this has happened that was the third time that he had blown a third you're three not lead. adjusting what is going on here like it, and we, when you watch I, okay I'm not a basketball coach okay so I can't definitively say that I should be you know critiquing basketball coaches however uh, yeah I'm bad Doc they're up twenty points Doc's just sitting back you know he's just chilling it, everything's fine you know this is crunch time for you. And now this is like game seven for you. You're going into Atlanta and you're down a game. It like, it, this is not good. My if you're whole, the Sixers, how are you not just wildly embarrassed? You know what I mean? As doc rivers, like how are you just not embarrassed every time? Because it happens every time, you know, what's happening. You haven't changed a fucking thing, dude. You, like, know, you, you gotta wonder what the media in uh, Philly is like right now. I bet dude, it's ruthless. They want to kill him. Bro. Oh I, yeah. yeah I, unfortunately, like, it, I don't, be like doc rivers is an amazing person. So like, I'm not going to thrash him as a person. But let me let me kind of say this. The Hawks are a really good and exciting team. They got some of the most they got one of the most electric players in the league with Trey Con or Trey Young. Uh, you know, they have a very good power forward and center in John Collins. Um Huerta is a snarp, sniper, and Okongwu is barely getting playing time right now. And you, and you got veterans like Gallinari that are and stepping and up. And Gallo, yeah, yeah. Dude. And then you have, like, all these veteran scorers and, like, Lewis, Lou Williams. Oh, my and, God, yeah, I forgot Lou yeah, Will. Yeah, Lou Williams on the – dude, he's a straight bucket getter. I totally forgot Lou and, Will was playing yeah, great. Yeah, Gallo. Yeah, he had 15 points. And Gallo played, and he had, I think, either 16 or 18. Like, because here's – they don't have any all-stars, but they have a lot of very good players. They have bucket getters, bro. Yeah, they have, they have bucket straight getters. bucket getters. And, and Trey Young, quite honestly, should be an all star. Yeah, well, he is. He made the all star team this year. Oh, did he? Yeah, he did. Oh, thank God. okay, good. For and him. then on top of that, uh, Clint Capella is pretty good. You know, he can put, put, put like don't get me wrong, playing against Joel Embiid. Joel is, Embiid's but, wiping the floor. Yeah, Clint exactly. But, but he's, Clint Capella, like, it, okay, this is uh, we're counting my. I'm counting age, eggs before they hatch. But if they do win. Like Clint Capello perform a lot better against the Nets than he will. Absolutely, against the, they don't have a matchup. Yeah, they they don't have a matchup. They got rid of Jarrett uh, Allen, so I the Sixers run into the same issue every year: not enough shooting, no clutch player, no takeover player. At the end of the game day, like Joel Embiid's a superstar, but he can't just do everything. And like right now, your second best player isn't even Ben Simmons; it's Seth Curry. So honestly, in my opinion, trade Ben Simmons for Dejounte Murray and a bag of peanuts. You get a very good defensive player who can pass really well and can score and actually shoot a jumper. And save money, too. Dude, yeah. it, it, it limits your freaking offense so much that they're like, I'm just not going to guard him unless he's fifteen within 15 feet of the rim. He doesn't even shoot mid-range, bro. All right, so uh, next, we're going to talk about the Jazz and the Clippers. Th this game was, or th this series in general is just really, really interesting. So right now, the Clippers are currently, they're up 3-2, and they're going back to Staples Center to play game six. This is this is game seven for the Clippers because if they if they don't win in LA, they have to go back to Utah when Utah has momentum and that crowd is just ruthless right now. They Utah they, they don't give a, not even one fuck about COVID rules. That crowd is popping and and, and players you know you, you got to realize they're not used. They, it's been a while since they played Absolutely. in big crowds and people forget yeah. like, how much of an advantage it is to play on the road. The, it's, huge. It's it's a huge, well, huge, I should say, disadvantage, you know, if you're the Clippers. Yeah, for the Clippers, but yeah. for the Jazz, it's a beautiful thing when this game, those are going to yeah. be a way better position. This seems just bizarre. Watch on offense, they don't have ball movement. This is one of the most uneventful, unexciting offenses to watch. But what happens, they're so talented, they're like, okay, Kawhi, you take the ball. All right, Paul George, you take the ball. It's like you're watching guys at LA Fitness play. But these guys are just so fucking good that they can get the ball in. Paul George is playing the way that Paul George should play in the playoffs. I hate Paul George, but you got to admit, the guy's playing his ass off right now. And honestly, for in my opinion, like, imagine how much better they would be with ball movement. Dude, like, that's what I'm saying. So, like, Ty Lu, don't get me wrong. Like... I still think I don't think he's a great coach, but he did something really smart. He played small against the against the Jazz. Uh, he barely played Zubac, if at all. And Rudy Gobert didn't have a single block. And the, and the Clippers were unequivocally the better team in, yep. in Game Five. It wasn't even close. This team is starting to click the way that the Clippers team should click. And th to think that if they had a good coach, 
you know, like if they had Frank Vogel as their coach. Or, or passing. Or, yeah, or if they just passed a little bit. Yeah. The Jazz, they, their ball movement is so much better. Chemistry, they have such better chemistry. They're than, honestly so beautiful to watch it's just a game of basketball because you're just like, dude, that is fucking teamwork. That's absolutely. teamwork. It's just like the ball goes from one corner to the top of the key, down to the post, and back out to the left corner, and then they hit a three, and you're like, dude, four people touch the ball. That's awesome. You know, it's just weird. And and thing is, if the Jazz, because obviously uh, Donovan Mitchell, he's banged up right now, but if the Jazz, if if Bojan Bogdanovic, I don't think he's going to put up 32 again like he did the last game, but if he can play well, I mean, who, who knows what can happen in, in the series. I agree. You know, th- this is... Uh, you know, it, it's just a really, really weird series. That that was a great win for the Clippers. Uh, probably, hot take, probably the best win ever in franchise history. Winning on the road against a one seed when they had their backs up against the wall and Kawhi was out. That's a great win. That's a great win. I, I You know what I mean? I, I, I bleed purple and yellow. But yeah, like, you hate them. I watched it. But, you, but I'd be a hater if I was saying that that, that wasn't a good win. So, uh, you know, this is going to be a good game. Uh, it's going to be a good game to watch. Uh, but let's talk about the game that just ended an hour or two ago, the Bucks and the Nets, which, holy fucking shit, I don't think anyone saw that happen. Dude, like, okay, so, like, you're... Game bro- seven, dude, baby. We're we sitting here, we were seven. talking, like, okay, they're done. Like, I, you said it, I said it, like, we're like, we're, they're done. And then Giannis drops 30, which is awesome, but Chris Middleton dropped 38 with 10 boards, 5 assists, and 5 steals. My guy was on a mission. Dude, he's out on a mission, bro. He was absolute swiper, no swiping, bro. Stealing the ball 24-7, bro. Like and swiper, no swiping. Yeah, absolutely, bro. <laughs> and it was so cool. I, I'm a Pistons fan. Chris Middleton, we traded him for Brandon Jennings, so I'm really sad about that. But it's all right. We suck, and it's cool watching basketball regardless. Dude, Kevin Durant puts up 32, but without Kyrie, Harden didn't play that well because you're going to lock up Harden. You're like, okay, we got to lock up one of these guys. So lock up Harden with Drew Holiday, who's a phenomenal defensive player. He's made first-team all-defense and uh, Joe Harris had nine. Blake Griffin had 12. Jeff Green had five. And then Kevin Durant had 32. Kevin Durant was still Kevin Durant. But dude, he's, he's, pu- he's putting the team on his back. Absolutely. Right he's playing the best basketball of his career at like almost 33, dude. He, I mean, you can make the argument he's currently the best basketball player in the world right now. I, I think he is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I absolutely think he sure. is. Yeah. yeah. So, it, 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 dude, like my whole thing is like, honestly, I thought this might be a sweep. I thought the Nets might sweep him. But, dude, like, the... <sighs> Game seven. Yeah. Game seven, baby. Game seven, dude. Game seven. And the Bucks are playing team basketball, dude. Like Chemistry. Yeah, chemistry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all know their roles. Like, P.J. Tucker had three points. He knows his role. But he knows what he's got to do. Brooke Lopez had eight points. Pat Connaughton had zero in 22 minutes. He just plays D. He just plays he D. He just plays D. He knows what he's supposed to do. Get the ball to Giannis. Get the ball to Drew. Get the ball to Chris. All three of those guys are all-stars. Get them the ball, and then... Just see what happens and just play your role. How, how great would a Bucks Hawks like, <laughs> like, like East Coast, Coast Finals be? <laughs> I don't know how great? I mean, <laughs> but dude, like, like that, like, like, a lot of team that could happen. A lot that of team could basketball. happen. Yeah, it absolutely could happen. That could absolutely yeah. happen. Like, I mean, do we really, re- do we really have faith that the, the Sixers are going to go into Atlanta when they're, they're in a do or die situation? Atlanta, when's the last time the Hawks have been remotely good in basketball? Like, since fucking Dominique Wilkins? No. <laughs> like, remember when, like, they had that incredible run with, like, Corver and, like, yeah. Joe, they had they had Joe, Joe Crawford. Crawford and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were good. But I mean, but what did they make it to like, they didn't even make it to like the East Coast finals. No. So. Yeah, like that's, that's still not that great. But, you know, this has been an absolutely wild playoffs for some shooty hoops. And we're, we're looking forward to covering some more of this. Yeah. Because this, uh, like, you know, we got, we got new shit coming out every day. Uh, and, and, and like it, the, the playoffs have just been awesome. Um, I have a few more notes before we end this. So Chris, Paul, lock yourself in a porta potty and don't come out until you're well again. Yeah, holy don't shit. don't go anywhere. This don't man go is anywhere. cursed. Don't go anywhere. This, this man, man is do cursed. not go anywhere. Get by a porta potty, tape it shut around you, and have someone that is vaccinated feed you through a fucking hole, bro. Poor Chris Paul, honestly, dude. Like I feel really bad for him, honestly. honestly. Because if there's anyone that deserves to have a championship out of anyone in these in these playoffs, it's Chris Paul. Yeah, he's never been a ring chaser. Every team he's ever been on has been good, has been better because of Chris Paul. Bro, the Thunder were like a five seed in the West last year, entirely because of Chris Paul. They had him, 
They had shy. They had, yeah, they had, they had, uh, they had SGA, and then they had Gallinari, and and they they were like they were like a good team. they were like a really good team. <laughs> they were like a good team. And so like uh you know this is gonna be a really good playoffs. All right, so uh you know let us know what we think about this. If you agree with us, then uh, you know comment on this video. Hit us up on Twitter at Armchair Pods. Or if you, if you, you want to take a big fat shit on everything we said. Yeah. Or if you want to just tell us what you had for lunch, you know, let us know what your favorite color is. What are your marital problems? What's your credit card number? Last four your social. You know, whatever you want to talk about. We just really, We're really so want to hear from you. We're so stupid. All right, guys. Follow us on YouTube, Spotify, everything else. We're on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, and we'll see you guys, I don't know, probably tomorrow. Yeah, sounds good. All right, thank you for watching.